This a crazy most story. Of the times when people see something happen like this, the person that do it don't ever get to tell their side of the story. Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. Why? So, in the beginning, everything was good. Like, like our life was good. But the whole reason they kind of switched it up was like a couple, like a week ago, when uh, her parents, like one of her parents tried to get involved in our relationship and tried to turn her away from me or like ask about me and how I provide for her when I was providing very well. And um, it just made her like, like start to act different. I had been there with her for almost, almost what, 15 months, 15, 16 months. And they had never like came to check on her. I only seen them come to check on her like twice out of like almost, what, a year, year and a half. And I had been there for emotionally, physically, and spiritually, but it was like, when she when she tried to move on to the next chapter in her life, when her mom asked, like, how would he provide? Now that you about to get a good job, how would he provide? I was getting ready to launch a business. I, I didn't just up and just wake up and do this. I didn't up and just wake up and do this. Had y'all had problems before? We had no problems at all. This was a buildup of, of just us taking a whole week. We had been in the house together for almost a year trying to get our business plans together. We had then figured out a, a, a workout plan, a, a, a dieting plan, a, a, a financing plan. We, we had everything laid out. I, I, I even helped her get her business launched and sat there with her while she was trying to get her business, her business put together when she had to actually run a church, go to college. So telling me it's protocol, I have to do my job, this is what I'm supposed to do. I said, look, man, I already got enough stress going on right now. Me and, me and, me and, me and Shorty over here trying to keep things level. I finally talked with her. She was like, she's ready to go back to work. But honestly, she didn't want to go to work because she didn't want to leave me. But I said, go ahead and go to work. But her parent, her, her mom on this end was putting pressure on her and making her cry and break down. I shot her in the head. And then you said. But I didn't just do that. She told me. She told me I pulled a dog inside of the room. I pulled a dog inside of the room. And I, and I, and I, had, I hadn't snapped already, I was saying red. So when I pulled a dog in the room, I was about to set the dog on fire. And she told me, she said, no, don't do nothing to the dog. You can take me and do whatever you wanna do to me instead and let him live. So I did that. I did exactly that because she started making a lot of noise. I did exactly that. I mean, when you snap, you don't think about remorse, you just snap. So, I mean, do you have remorse if you ever tell a lie? Do you have remorse if you ever look somebody in the face and told a bold lie? Or you had a question, but you knew the answer, but you just want to see what somebody's going to tell you? Do you have remorse when you feel, when you look in the mirror and, and you know this is not the right way to, to, to go out, but you still go out like that? Like, like how many times in your life do you feel like you, should, you have remorse? And the reason why, the reason why it made me set the house on fire was because even watching the cameras, like I told you, when her mom tried to get involved, when you try to get involved in somebody's relationship or you speak on the person that they with, I watch you on camera come check on her. You didn't even come and knock on the door. You just called her phone, but you didn't come in. She was dead since Tuesday. You came to the house on Wednesday. You, I was texting you on her phone. You knew something all right, but you still had a key and you still didn't come in and check on her. So you killed her Tuesday, set her house on fire on but they came on Wednesday, and, and she came on Wednesday, never came inside the house. She just parked in front of the house. So that's what made me fight. That what made me fire man. Like, yo, y'all, like, this is what escalates when you, when you jump in front of somebody's relationship, and you act like you want to be there, but you came all the way to the house from Suffolk, Chesapeake, borderline. You drove all the way from there, and you just parked in front of the house, and you just drove off. If you had to open up the door, you would have realized that the house wouldn't be on fire. He was already dead. When did you kill Mr. Baxter? He was dead on Wednesday. You killed Mr. Baxter on Wednesday? Yeah, he was on he was dead on Wednesday. So someone tell me this. What um before we get into that, what's your relationship with Mr. Baxter? He he basically raised me. He basically like raised me. Like I was raised him for like fifteen years, but at the same time when I needed him the most, he won't dead. 
So at the same time, when I needed this and that, just something to get on my feet, he tell me he ain't had nothing. But when I, but.